we'll be checking out the highly requested Cerakote Rapid Ceramic Paint Sealant. Over the past year, this has been one of the hottest, most demanded products for my testing, so it's risen up in the leaderboards, and today we're gonna find out just how good it is. Now, one interesting thing about it is that they claim that it's supposed to be pro-grade results, yet it's something that you can find pretty much anywhere. Amazon is where I got mine. I don't have a relationship with the Cerakote people. Now, that's very interesting, and again, I can see why everybody's asking about it. Between the marketing and the claims, it's something we just have to look at. So let's put it through our test suite and find out just how good this thing is. Let's kick things off by seeing if this product is easy to apply. This junkyard hood is polished with Meguiar's 205 and properly decontaminated for every test. I notice there seems to be a lot of debris inside the box, and I see like little pieces of stems and vegetative matter in this thing. Because there's leaves and gook in these, I'm just gonna wash them, and also they're just so linty. I'm just gonna use my rag company towel. I'm sure once I wash these, these will find some use for something. We'll be following the instructions on this card. With the product ready to go, the instructions couldn't be simpler. It's literally spray on, wipe around, wipe off like any other sealant. Performance is subjectively rated between a positive 10 and a negative 10, where a positive 10 represents the easiest products to use in the category. This was such a simple spray on, wipe around, wipe off installation. It came off so easily when I flipped the towel. This product is definitely a 10. Couldn't be simpler within its category. With the Cerakote applied, let's talk about how pretty it looks. Visual appeal is subjectively rated between a positive 10 to a negative 10, where a positive 10 represents exceptionally pretty products, while a negative 10 represents a product that takes away from the polished finish. As you can see, I've placed a blue marker on the red panel and the product is on the left side of the marker. We'll also average the score between our red test hood and the black panel that I'll show you in a second. Here's another shot where the product is now on the right side of the marker. Personally, I think this product looks fantastic. I'm sort of teetering between the five and the 10 and honestly, I might go out to 10. I do think it looks really good. Yeah. I'll say red gets a 10. And here's our black panel. The Cerakote is on the right side here, and there's a different product we're testing on the left that I have covered up. You'll see that on a future video. I think maybe it's a little more striking on the red, but I don't know. I think I'm gonna go with a five for the Cerakote on the black. I think the red is more striking. And for some reason, we do see a difference red on black. Sometimes products are really hard to see on the red and then they just pop on the black and vice versa. So overall, I think we'll average this to a seven and a half. I need just one second of your time to let you know that the tools and products we've looked at today can be found down below in the description. Those are affiliate links and clicking through and purchasing anything at all on those websites will give me a small commission that helps run this channel. Furthermore, there's a link to prior testing down below in the description if you wanna compare how this product stacks against other products I've looked at. So go ahead and bookmark that. That'll be valuable in the future. Slickness imparted by spray sealants can be a great way to reduce marring swirls and scratches when washing and maintaining your vehicle. In this test, we're gonna objectively score slickness by measuring the static coefficient of friction of the product that's been applied to this panel. So for this, we're gonna set up our block, we're gonna get our measurement instrument, and we're gonna take five readings. So we've got 110 grams, 130 grams, 130 grams again, 110 grams, and our fifth final reading, 130 grams again. By taking five readings, we found that on average, it takes 122 grams to get our block moving. Now we know the block weighs 1,040 grams, so our static coefficient of friction here is gonna wind up being 0.12 rounded up. Now when this panel is prepped, and polished, it comes out to 0.38 as the static coefficient of friction of the bare surface. So to get our score, we're gonna take 0.38, we're gonna subtract 0.12, and we're gonna get 0.26. Now for the actual score, we multiply that by 30, it's just kind of a scoring factor, and we get 7.8 points. And 7.8 is a great score, that's definitely gonna protect your paint. It is a quite slick product, very happy with that. We can now use my gloss meter to determine if the panel has lost or gained gloss. We'll make sure gloss meter is reading 104 at 20 degrees on the calibration slide, and then let's take 10 readings that will average out. Points will be awarded or taken away for any gain or loss in gloss, up to a tenth of a gloss unit. Looks like 88.8. .8. Gloss in this context is just the measured reflection of light, and with nothing applied, this panel reads 94 gloss units on average after being machine polished. 90.6. 88.6. .6.
Looks like 94.5, and we got 90 flat right there. And that means 90.6 gloss units is what we averaged. We're gonna subtract 94, and we see that we lost 3.4 gloss units. When you polish paint, you bring it up to a very high level of gloss, and it's difficult to apply a last step product on top and expect gloss levels to improve. Now keep in mind, gloss is a complex subject, and what the brain interprets as glossy and pretty is more than just shine, but character, depth, and other visual qualities. We just wanna make sure there isn't a huge drop off where we're losing like 10, 15 gloss units. Just for fun, I could show you guys something off where we did the wax, the sealant, the sealant's right there. And look, we got a perfect 94 right past the sealant. Durability can be a huge factor when deciding if a product is right for you. I've devised an objective and repeatable test that will give us a great way to compare products. What I'm showing you now is the hydrophobicity of our Cerakote, so you can see what it looks like before we do the test. I'm gonna lock the test panel into the alchometer and this machine will scrub a terry covered applicator in a predictable wear pattern at right around 30 RPM. It's gonna dispense shampoo for lubrication as it goes. The scoring, which I'll show you on your screen, is done in buckets of zero, 10, 20, 50, 100, 300, and 1,000. If the product is still working past a set, it will get that amount of points. To get started, I'm gonna pre-soak the applicators with the shampoo solution and I'm gonna squirt a bit of it onto the panel to prevent a dry start. I've dialed in 10 washes into the machine, which will automatically prompt it to stop. While durability and longevity are different things, there is a clear and consistent correlation between high durability and high longevity products. Longevity may be affected by other factors such as temperature, chemical interactions, and other unique aspects of your environment. So we've just completed 10 washes. Let's take a look at the Cerakote and see if it's still hydrophobic. Oof, the Cerakote is, I'm afraid, dead. That's not a good showing. I've heard a lot about this product. It's very heavily advertised, and uh, I was definitely hoping for more than 10 washes. Oof, it's worse than the control. It's actually gone through the coating. And keep in mind, we gave 24 hours of cure time before doing this test and uh, it's actually eating through the product and it's messing up the clear coat now because it's worse than the control. Now that our Cerakote product has gone through the full test battery, I wanna talk about what I liked, what I didn't like, and what I think the people at Cerakote could improve. Ease of installation, I think, is core to products that are spray sealants. People expect to take a product like this, spray it on, wipe it off, and have it just work. It is a feature that is pretty much required for something like this. And I think the Cerakote proved that. It was very easy to apply, very easy to take off. As far as the visual appeal, I thought this was a strong product. I don't think this is the prettiest thing I've ever seen. There are definitely more stunning products on both red and black paint, but this did very well. Tying in with the looks, we've got the gloss meter testing. And keep in mind, this is just the reflection of light. It tells you if something's dull or more light reflective. It doesn't necessarily tell you if it's pretty. So in this case, the Cerakote, I think, performed on par. We typically see a very minor loss in these kind of products. Some spray products and some coatings are able to keep it pretty high with only a little bit of loss, and this did fairly well. I'm not gonna knock it for that. I think it was a reasonable showing. As far as slickness, this product is definitely quite slick. Is it topping our charts? No, but it is up there. This is a very slick product, and like I mentioned, that slickness can be quite important when you're washing your car. You want things to glide on your paint. You don't want that scratchy feeling. You know, when you get a car, especially like a used car, that somebody hasn't maintained a coating or a wax on, and you go to wash it for the first time, and it's like tacky. Yeah, you don't want that. You want something like this, which is gonna make it slick. As with every other product I've tested, I was not able to detect any UVA protection in terms of absorption or reflection of UV light. I am still doing the UV testing, but I don't think it's worth it, including it in the video, unless we have a result. Otherwise, it's just me over and over showing you a failed result. So if we do see something that performs, I will show it. If some company comes out with some cool new claims, we'll definitely check it out too. Like we did that with Optimum, for example, and also didn't find the performance. I think the biggest thing all of you want to talk about with this product is likely durability because it is such a hyped and marketed product. 
I think people are expecting this to be a durability monster. Keep in mind, I don't see anywhere on their bottle or even on their website where they make any big durability claims. They say months. They don't even say three, four, five, they just say months. So honestly, with that in mind, I do think that lives up to what they're promising. Are there stronger spray products? Absolutely. There are much, much stronger products that are much harder in our alcometer test to get off the panel. This came off really easy. It's what I would call a low durability product. Is it gonna last some amount of washes and maybe a few months on your car? Sure. Keep in mind the price point on this is attractive. It's so easy to use. It's slick, it's pretty. Would I use this product? Yeah, I think if I just wanted something quick that would last a couple of months and I really enjoyed applying it after a car wash, I would use this. Now they do talk about professional installations here and this is what we really did for this video. The panel was prepped, it was decontaminated, polished, all that good stuff. And in reality, would I use it for that sort of work? No, because I think if I'm going through the trouble of the full paint correction, I would probably throw something a little more durable on. Do I think only coatings belong on paint corrected cars? No, absolutely not. There are spray products that are pretty easy to use that still get you a year potentially or more of protection. And there are like coating lights as well. However, personally, I would not use such a low durability product if I was gonna go through the trouble of what they're calling a professional installation. But you know, for daily use, if you just wanna wash your car, spray something on, yeah, it's fine. If you're new to my channel, I do this kind of nerdy product testing content pretty frequently. I also do general detailing, how-tos and guides and discussions, as well as car mods and car repair related content. If you're an auto enthusiast, there's something here for you. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, Leave me a nice comment and I will see you again really soon.